to me, so there's of course physics and computational uh, fascinating questions here, but to me, there's a practical psychological question, which is, you know, how do you create a virtual reality world that um, is as compelling and not necessarily even as realistic, but almost as realistic, but as compelling or more compelling than physical reality. Because mm. something tells me it's not it's not very difficult in the in the in the full history of human civilization. That that is an interesting kind of simulation to me because that feels like it's doable in the next hundred years, creating a world where we're all prefer to live in the digital world mm. and not like a visit but like yeah. it's like you're seen as insane no like you're required it's unsafe to live outside of the virtual world and uh it's interesting to me from an engineering perspective how to build that because i'm somebody that sort of loves video games and it seems like you can create incredible worlds there mm. and stay there and uh, that's a it's a different question than creating a ultra high resolution, high fidelity simulation of physics. But if that world inside a video game is as consistent as the physics of our reality, then you could have your own scientists in that world that trying to understand th that physics mm -hmm. world. It might look different. But and presumably, they'd eventually forget. You know, give it give it long enough, they might forget about their origins of being once biological and assume this was their only reality. Especially um, if you're now born, you know, uh, well, certainly if you're born, but even if you were eight years old or something when you first started wearing the yeah. headset. <laughs> yeah, or you have a memory wipe when you go in. I mean, it, it, it also kind of maybe speaks to this issue of like Neuralink and how do we keep up with AI in our world? If you want to augment your intelligence, um, perhaps one way of competing, and the, one of your impetuses for going into this digital reality would be to be competitive intellectually with um, artificial intelligences, that you could trivially augment your reality if your brain was itself artificial. But I mean, one one skepticism I've always had about that is, is whether, it's a more of a philosophical question, but how much is that really you if you do a mind upload? Is this just a duplicate of your memories that thinks it's you versus truly a transference of your conscious stream into that reality? And I think when you, uh, you it's almost like the teleportation device in Star Trek, um, but with teleportation, quantum teleportation, you can kind of rigorously show that um, that uh, you know all as long as all of the quantum numbers are exactly duplicated as you transfer over. It truly is, from the universe's perspective, um, in every way, indistinguishable from what was there before. It really is, in principle, you and all the sense of being you versus creating a, a duplicate clone and uploading memories uh, to that human body or a computer that would surely be uh, a, a discontinuation of that conscious experience by virtue of the fact you've multiplied it. And so I... I would be hesitant about uploading for that reason. I would see it mostly as my own killing myself and having some um, AI duplicate of me that persists in this world, but is not truly my experience. Typical 20th century human <laughs> with, a, with an attachment to this particular singular instantiation of brain and body how silly humans used to be. Used to have rotary phones and um, <laughs> and, and other silly things.